Welcome to the Panther Valley Ecumenical Church. Welcome to those in this space, gathered in this place. And welcome to those online. So good to see all of you this day. Um, we have a quick and two quick announcements. Uh, we are so grateful for everyone who participated in our uh, pancake breakfast yesterday, whether you uh, took takeout, does that make sense, took takeout, or whether you stayed um, to eat uh, in Fellowship Hall. Uh, we, it was a very successful event. Um, we raised over, two, over $120 for the campership, and those, uh, those camperships go to Camp Johnsonburg. They allow um, kids to go to camp for a week in the summer. It is a blessed, life-changing event. So thank you all. And on that note, uh, we have a, a few pancakes and a few little uh, frittatas and some sausages left over. So we invite anyone who is um, hungry after worship to come downstairs into Fellowship Hall. You can either do takeout or you can stay and eat um, uh, uh, pancakes, eggs, and sausage. Mm -hmm. um, so, and it's free. <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank you so much. Um, are there any other announcements this morning? It is almost Advent. So everyone I know, almost Thanksgiving, I know everyone's getting busy. Next Sunday, the community Thanksgiving dinner is happening. Cross your fingers, hoping that it will continue to happen. Um, this is a free event that is put on by our youth group. And we have people who come um, that uh, from our Lord's Pantry, the people we share food with. We have several of those families coming. Uh, we have some folks out in the community and we will be bringing food um, to some Easter Seals folks. Uh, again, um, we invite all. It is free. If you wish to come and bring something, uh, you can bring a sign. Um, if you wish to come and not bring anything, hey, you're welcome. We will also be having the beginning of our Hanging of the Green service at 2.30 next Sunday. Um, and so that is going to be in this space. And the Hanging of the Greens, as, as many of you are aware, is um, all about the symbols of Christmas. And we hang the Christmas. So we will be setting up stations in the um, sanctuary here. And those stations will be up the entire Advent season. So if you cannot make it next week, no worries. You're welcome to come anytime the office is open or on Sunday mornings between, between 10 and 12 and help us decorate the trees and learn about the symbols of the season. So lots of fun and exciting things starting to happen in our space. I invite you to take a great big deep breath. Don't worry about that to-do list. It'll be there. Let go of the worries of the world for this short hour. Let 
let the Spirit of God rest on your heart. Let Jesus bring you peace. Let God hold you in the palm of God's hand. Will you join me in our call to worship? With you, O oh Lord, all things are possible. We bless you and praise your name forever. In you, O oh Lord, we find our home. We bless you and praise your name forever. Through you, O oh Lord, we are made one in Christ. We bless you and praise you, O oh Christ, for your saving love. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, our Maker, Creator, the Artist, the Author, to set forth His praise, to hear His holy word, and to ask for ourselves on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so, that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship. Let us kneel in silence, in thought, in prayer, and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins that we may obtain forgiveness by God's infinite goodness and mercy. Let us join in our prayer of confession. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have done unknown. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus the Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life, now and forevermore. Amen. Let us join together in singing a great familiar hymn, How Firm a Foundation. Thank you.
Let us join together in our colic. Blessed Lord, who caused all holy scriptures to be written for our learning, grant us so to hear them, read more, learn, and inwardly digest them, that we may embrace and ever hold fast the blessed hope of everlasting life, which you have given us in our Savior, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Gospel reading this morning is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8. As he came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, opposite the temple, Peter, James, John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be? What will be the sign that all these things are about to be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will be, and they will, will be many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. May God add to our understanding of his holy word. This is the last Sunday of Mark. I'll repeat that. This is the last Sunday of Mark. Are you all relieved? <laughs> Can everyone see that? Do I need to turn off the lights?
there? Cool. <laughs> Listen up, people. I know a thing or two about extinction. Let me tell you. Going extinct is a bad thing. You drive yourselves extinct. In seven million years, that's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. At least we have an asteroid. What's your excuse? You're headed for a climate disaster, and yet every year the government spends hundreds of billions of public funds on fossil fuel subsidies. And after you wait seven hundred of billions per year subsidizing giant meteors, that's what they're doing right now. Think of all the other things you can do with that money. Around the world, people are living in poverty. What can they tell them that would make more sense than, I don't know, paying for the demise of your entire species? Let me be real for a second. You've got a huge opportunity right now. As you rebuild your economies and bounce back from this pandemic, this is humanity for a chance. So here's my wild idea. Don't choose extinction. Save your species before it's too late. Stop what you're doing. Stop making excuses and start making changes. Thank you. It's the last Sunday of Mark, <laughs> right? Today we encounter what is known as the little apocalypse in Mark. Ain't so little, is it? Jesus is standing with his disciples. He's just come out of the temple. He's been talking about economic disparity. He's been talking about how we need to love our neighbors, love God, love ourselves. He's been showing us what love looks like. And now he says, look at these stones. Now, if you haven't been to the Temple Mount or the temple, the ruins of which are in Jerusalem. These stones are 40 feet wide by 40 feet tall by 40 feet deep. In the disciples' eyes, there's just no way that these stones could be destroyed. Mark began his gospel with a bang, and he is ending his gospel with a bang. All throughout the gospel, he has invited us to keep our crash helmets on, our seat belts on, and to stay awake. And now from chapter 13 all the way to the cross on, in chapter 16, Jesus is going to repeat to us, stay awake, watch with me. Can't you stay awake just one hour and watch with me? Today he's saying, watch out. What he means, the word is, in Greek is blipo, and what that means is a correct spiritual discernment. We need to, to watch out 
We need to discern what is going on with the Holy Spirit, with Jesus, with God. This is not a safe gospel. But we don't live in a safe world, neither did Jesus. It is a world that is chaotic, and this gospel was written in the midst of a great worry and distress. Rome was encroaching and would soon destroy that temple, the temple where God resided, God's house. What would it look like for humans to destroy God's house? Mark began his gospel. Mark began his gospel. Now that's on. Mark began his gospel announcing, having Jesus announce that God has come near. Repent. Remember, repent. I've said this since the beginning of Mark last Advent. Repent, turn around, turn back towards God, pay attention, watch, Filippo. Get your spiritual discernment in line, for God has drawn near. Life abundant has come, equality, healing. Prosperity for the poor, an evening out, a sharing of wealth for the wealthy. And today, we are warned. Do you see these great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. Beware, Jesus says, that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, this doesn't want to work. <laughs> Many will come in my name and say, I am he. But that's not how it works, Jesus has told us since the beginning of the Gospel of Mark. It's community. It's not a single savior. Yes, Jesus is our savior. But Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, community. And we, what we learned in Genesis, the first creation story, that we are to be working with God as stewards of God's house, God's creation. Watch, Jesus says. See what is going on. Look for the signs. Now, everyone who's read the Left Behind series, ooh, not many in this bunch. This isn't about the rapture. This isn't about the end of the world. It's about the end of the world as we know it. We've all experienced our worlds coming to an end. When your partner passes, when you lose your job, when you can't get up from addiction, when you feel like the whole world is against you, when the pandemic comes and takes your loved one, when the pandemic comes and takes away your freedom of movement and gathering and hugging, when scientists, theologians warn us that it's almost too late for God's home, it feels like the end of the world. 
But Jesus says, look for the signs. The signs that wake us up, those are the fires, the earthquakes, the water coming into our house. But he's talking about a different sign. Look for the sign of God coming near. For God has come near in Jesus Christ. And God comes near when we, as a community, hold each other tight, come up with ways of loving each other, of helping each other, of caring for each other. Friends, things are falling apart. We cannot deny it. The economies are falling apart. Communities are falling apart. Nations are warring against nations. Look at Poland, the border of Poland. And Belarus. Because of migration, because of climate crisis, there is a mass migration. And a border is falling apart and people are going to war. We need each other now more than ever. We must resist divisions. As Christ followers, we are not divisive people. We are people who gather each other close and hold each other tight. We are people who believe in a God of new beginnings. And that's the beauty at the end that Rick read. These are just the birth pangs. If anyone has been close to someone who has given birth, you know the pain they're going through. If you've ever had the opportunity to hold their hand, they might have put their nails into you. For pain is real. Birth pangs are real. The video we watched this morning isn't a joke. It was made by the United Nations Development Program. The, this is a program in the United Nations that fights against injustice, the injustice of poverty, the injustice of unjust financial systems, the injustice of inequality, the injustice of climate change. This department of, of the UN, this development program, made this video to show the leaders of the country who came, of all the countries in the world that came together for COP26 two Mondays ago. They weren't kidding. It's not fake news. We can do something. We must do something. A statement that I heard during the week from Christina Figueres is, it will take all of us coming together, pushing, right? In labor, we push, right? We push and pulling. It's those healers, those doctors, sometimes they, they have to pull new beginnings from us to accelerate the urgent solutions. Nature is the best teacher for the need of diversity. Read the Bible, it says that all through the Hebrew scriptures. Look at an ecosystem. It has bushes and it has trees, it has animals that crawl, some that are underneath the soil, some that fly. A healthy ecosystem is defined by a plethora of living organisms. We need that healthy diversity in our collective human endeavor to address this climate crisis. We are in a very turbulent moment. Time is running out. We need everyone to be engaged. We need everyone. We need the financial institutions. We need big business. We need governments. We need indigenous people. We need poor people. We need our youth. 
The, la the latter three are the ones that carry the wisdom, but they're also the ones who are going to suffer the most. We must work together, no matter how small or how big. One of the ways that I saw God at work in this COP26 uh, conference that happened for the last two weeks was a group made up of, well, when I looked at it, it was 130 businesses and nations called the Glasgow Financial Alliance for Net Zero. It's all about changing economies. It's all about making sure that capital flows are able to get to low and middle income countries. They're making sure that capital flow is de-risked and affordable and that there are equitable ways to repay and that all are given a chance to build an economy. Everyone the refugee communities bringing in electricity to them, suddenly an economy, a self-sustaining economy is blossoms in that space. There is amazing things happening. We are seeing financial systems that are no longer just for profit, but are now for people the planet and for profit and there are ways to hold them accountable it is incredible what has happened in the last two weeks it is the change that has happened in the direction of people's hearts is more than the last 30 years there is hope God is on the loose, and that is what the Gospel of Mark declares. Jesus has come into the world, and God is on the loose. Today, this apocalyptic text has done what apocalypse is supposed to do. Apocalypse is about revealing. It is revealed to us that Jesus says, wake up. Love is winning, and we can make a difference in this hurting yet beautiful world. We can do the littlest things. And we can do the biggest things. It's not the end of the world as we know it, that great REM song. It's the beginning of a beloved community that we are a part of. It is time for us to ask, to act, if we believe that God has indeed created this amazing and broken world. Amen. I do have the prayer list in front of me. It is the yellow list for those online. It's a yellow list, but for those online, you can, you can put your prayers in the chat. We would love to see them. For those who gathered here, our prayers are on this yellow list, but perhaps you didn't know we had this, or you have thought of another joy or concern. We ask that you lift that now. Yes, Mary. Well, first of all, you seem to be 
limped around. I had hip surgery, but I'm doing good. My other thing is I have metatastic breast cancer, which that sounds my problems. But I've had it for four years. And I have to fix All the time. <laughs> and all the time. God is good. good. Any other joys or concerns? Who can beat that joy? It's a beautiful <laughs> joy. And amen and amen. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes, we are in the tradition of the Episcopal Church today, and Jema has been hired by the Episcopal Church for outreach. She is going to do wonderful work. That's beautiful. It's beautiful. Arthur. Yeah, so uh, Joan's daughter um, has been hired. She's been looking for a job for two years. And she's been hired for the, by the Episcopal Church uh, to do outreach, which the Episcopal Church does amazing outreach. And they have a rock star for an archbishop. So, <laughs> any others? How are our friends in Haiti? There still are troubles in Haiti, and um, her sister is um, doing as best as she can in, in this environment. So. Will you join with me in our prayers of the people? There is fear, O oh God and there is uncertainty in many human hearts, even in our hearts today, and for some every day. There is aimlessness in the hearts of others, senseless excitements about the details of the end of time, about the signs that are around us, for us to read and to understand. And yet they have no peace in this knowing, and often argue about the meaning of things with others, instead of breathing in the strength of earth and sky, and breathing out love and compassion upon their own selves, and the self of the world around them, the world you have made. O oh, great God, you know about fear, aimlessness, senseless excitements, and deep depressions of the soul. You understand the afflictions of the lonely, of those who have no one to draw close to. We pray especially today for these, O oh God, that they may know your presence and see your power and be consumed by your glory and so find that which we all need. Shine your light, we pray, upon those we name before you in our hearts now, be it ourselves or the person next to us or one we left at home, perhaps one we heard about on TV 
or the one who is our neighbor. Peace, O oh God, to them as we lift them up before you now. We lift up Patty, who is in the hospital, Pat Custard, George Coppola, Herb Tomser, Betty Connolly, Vinnie Candido, Alice, Charles, Laura, Walter, Bonnie Sue, Janet, Wanda, Robbie, Heath, Heather, and her family. We lift up Betty, and we continue to lift up with joy Diane's son, Jonathan. We lift our leaders. We lift up Rick Nelson and Keith. We lift up Adam and Kaylin, Marie, Jim and Michelle, Charles, Walter, Laura, Lisa and Brandon, Dong Hin Nam, the De La Cruz family. We lift up churches as they try to do ministry in a new time. We lift up your world as it groans, waiting for your new creation to happen here and now. Oh Lord, hear our prayer. And now I invite you as the beloved children of God to pray together the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, And now I invite you to think about something that you can do this week for the earth. It could be a walk outside and a prayer. It could be recycling something you haven't recycled before. It could be foregoing a shower for a day or two. But I invite you, whatever it is that comes in your heart, to, to do it with gratitude and to, to, get, to, dedicate, to dedicate it to God. For you are God's beloved. And God has created you for such a time as this. Will you join with me in our offertory prayer? God of life, Savior of the poor, receive with this money gratitude for your goodness, penitence for our pride, and dedication to your service in Jesus Christ our Lord. Today's collects from the Episcopal Church are the collect for guidance, followed by the collect for mission. Let us join together in praying. Heavenly Father, in you we live and move and have our being. We humbly pray so to guide and govern us by your Holy Spirit that in all the cares and occupations of our life, we may not forget you, but may remember that we are ever walking in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And for mission, Lord Jesus, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross, that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you, for the honor of your name. Amen.
Do not forget to love yourself, to love God, to love your neighbor. And do not forget that your neighbor is not just the two-legged among us. It is the four, the eight, <laughs> the millipede. It is the trees. It is the birds. It is this beautiful earth. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Go in peace. Go in joy. Go in love. Amen. Thank you.